Hello and welcome to another episode of the Closure Pills screencast. This is episode number five and we're going to see a function called trampoline from the standard library. And the content of this uh, screencast is um, roughly based on uh, a book I'm writing about the Closure Standard Library and the functions and the macros in the in the standard library. Uh, is available from Manning at that uh, link and uh, uh, the content of the screencast as I said is roughly based on that I cannot go into like uh, bigger details of what I have available here in terms of screen size the examples in the book are much more extended uh, that is my Twitter handle just in case you want to get in touch and we can start so trampoline uh, trampoline is a, a easy function in terms of uh, sources. Let's have a look. Source of trampoline. And as you can see, it takes uh, a function and optional arguments as input. And then uh, it invokes the function and it checks the results. If the result is another function as of the results of calling fn question mark then it calls the function again so it recurs and it calls the function again if it's not it's just returning the result which is red in that case so fn and enclosure are all the core functions and all the custom function you might define at the REPL for example but even if something like a vector for example one two three is an invocable object and you can call it like that a vector is not a function in this sense it is an ifn so there are just two slightly different ways to define what can be invoked in closure and one specifically um, uh, is restricted to the function that you define with defn fn and lambdas and so on why I'm saying this? Because um, if you want to use a function, an input function for trampoline, and this function is uh, returning uh, another function, then if you want to signal that uh, it's time to return the result, you can wrap the function, uh, the, the returning function, into a collection, for example, and that will, will signal to trampoline that the exit condition has been met and uh, the, the function can exit. Um, let's try to see how we can use trampoline. Um, one example, which is just a simple example, is for example um, a function that we can call caller that is taking another function and a number n and it's similar to trampoline is saving saving the results of invoking f and then is checking a condition like uh, are we done yet so are we zero um, is n equals to zero if it is then just return the result so far if it's not let's call again and we decrement n um, so what we have here is a, ge a generic caller for a function. So if we use, for example, a print line of a dot 10 times, and if I can only spell it, print line, we should be able to see uh, 10 dots and Basically, what caller is doing is taking this function, invoking it 10 times, and returning. Um, we can use any function, really. Um, it just will be invoked with no arguments, and plus with no arguments, returns 0. And But this caller function is invoking it 10 times. Um, what problems do we have if we don't, if we don't do anything uh, specific is that we are going to consume the stack at some point for larger enough 
number of times that we, we invoke this function. And of course we didn't use loop recur that will prevent uh, consuming the stack and will transform uh, a stack consuming recursion into a plain uh, like for loop, Java for loop, so to speak. Um, but we can also use trampoline to do the same thing and uh, because trampoline will apply that recur loop recur for us as we've seen in the in the sources and in order to do that though we need to do uh we need to slightly change our function so let me clear a little bit def and color f and then and we save the results and then we go checking our condition as before and we return them and this is the point where we change things instead of just returning just of going into a recursion into color we wrap the recursion into a lambda function an anonymous function of no no arguments before invoking ourselves again so what change what is changing here is that if i try to do what i was doing before instead of getting back whatever result i'm getting i get i'm stopping right at the first invocation when i'm returning the rapid function as you can see here this strange printing at the screen and in order to, to actually see the result i'll have to call it myself a few times until I'm able to go through all the iteration I need to go through. So I'm basically, I'm wrapping the the part of the function that is doing the recursion into a thunk, uh, which is just a, a, a funky way or a properly functional way to define um, a function invocation that is suspended into a lambda waiting to be invoked and waiting to return results. And I need to call it explicitly like that. And or um, the option is to use trampoline that will do exactly the same thing for me. And uh, so so if I now if I now call uh, trampoline with uh, color plus ten, um, I just obtain the same effect. I can also do with two, and that will be the same thing. So, in the case of single uh, recursion or recursion to self, um, trampoline is not particularly useful, just adding like a layer of complexity. But there is one case, a different kind of recursion called mutual recursion, where trampoline is very useful to prevent a stack overflow. So, Let's uh, check another example now. And I'm going to define two functions, and these two functions are going to mutually call themselves. Since uh, the, f the first function I'm going to define needs to call the second, I need to declare the second uh, without any implementation detail. So this is um, a quite common example in mutual recursion, just to explain mutual recursion, but it's not like the way you would solve the problem. And we just want uh, two functions that are able to tell us if a number is even or odd, and number n if it's even or odd. Um, a definition of even is either this number is zero or is odd, the decrement of that number. So if that condition is met, I can say it's even. And very similarly, if an is odd, if these two conditions are met at the same time, if it's not zero, because it's definitely not zero if it's odd, and is even the decrement of it. So let's check it. 
Oh yes, this is even. This is not. Is this odd? Yes, it is. So you can maybe already imagine what problem we might have with this if we go a little bit too far away we have the same problem as before they are mutually recursive the only difference is that um, uh, we cannot really invoke a recur here um, because the target of a recur are the two possible options two possible options are the, the function definition or a loop instruction but the target of our recursion is outside the function so we can't we cannot use recur in this case uh, but what we can do we can use trampoline which is especially uh, designed for this kind of problem and we know that if we want to use trampoline we need to wrap the recur the recursive part of the function into a wrapping function so we just need to add a pound sign and we should be good to go so if we then go to is odd and we do something similar here we wrap it then we should be able to call this through trampoline and we won't incur in any stack overflow so thanks to trampoline trampoline is basically in uh, including in this mutual recursion uh, proper loop recur that is removing the stack consuming operation um, so this is a small example and you you're not going to solve the problem um, if a, a number is even or odd this way but this is definitely one possibility um, there are although more interesting uh, use cases for trampoline uh, one of them is the implementation of uh, state machines um, if you represent each state um, of the state machine as a function and this function has res the responsibility to decide what to do with that state and if to delegate to the next function to deal with the next state and you can think of uh, this state machine as uh, a relatively high number of uh, functions calling themselves and in a recursive way so for um, large enough uh, trail of states uh, this uh, modeling could go into stack overflow exactly in the same way that we saw here and uh, uh, you could use trampoline to prevent that exactly in the same way that you saw for this um, smaller example and um, with uh, state machines uh, you can model uh, traffic lights you can model elevators and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of in terms of performance profile of trampoline, um, there's not really a lot to say. Um, trampoline number of steps, execution steps, is uh, delegated ex exclusively to the input function. So it's the input function deciding how many times trampoline is going to recur, and uh, well, th that would result in a linear behavior if the input function is a linear function uh, in terms of space instead uh, the entire point of trampoline is to prevent um, stack overflow so it won't consume the stack and is not adding anything to memory either um, so is a quite cheap function for the kind of problem it solves so it is very unlikely that you'll have to chase uh, trampoline invocation at the profiler uh, as a hotspot. Uh, there, there are likely, very likely, other things you might need to find first uh, before looking at a trampoline. So it's, it's relatively safe to use um, uh, performance wise and, and shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I think it's all uh, for this episode and so um, the uh, show notes are going to be available uh, um, in this github repo uh, that you see down below the slide here and uh, there will be specifically one uh, document created for trampoline with the sessions that we just saw at the REPL and um, I think it's all and thank you for listening and uh, 
I hope to see you back uh, the next week for another Closure Pills. Thank you. Goodbye.